I guess for me, really, and I'll try and make this story short, um, but for some weird reason in Arkansas, in seventh grade, they had all the kids from all surrounding counties go to the same school, the same seventh grade. So we have no one to play sports against. So they put seven football teams within this one school and then set seven cheerleading squads within the school. And I grew up next to two girls and I have a sister and we were all like one year apart. So Lindley went to seventh grade and she was a cowboy cheerleader. And then Cecily went and she was a Viking. And then my sister went and she was a Viking. And then it was my year and it was not will I make cheerleader, it was am I gonna be a Viking like my sister? And Because everybody made cheerleader. I'm sure you know where the story's going. Um, my mom had bought my kids, um, you know, and I, I went through the tryouts because everyone did, and then we went down that Saturday and they had it all posted, and I'm with my mom, and, you know, it's like, okay, am I a Viking? No. Am I a cowboy? No. Not a Raider. Not, you know, down the line. And I'm like, wait, there's been a mistake, and we go reread, and I mean, there had been no mistake. I didn't make cheerleader, and again, I can't, like... I did, we didn't know people who weren't cheerleaders. And, so, <laughs> and uh, I mean, it was like, I mean, there were people that like came to our house and sent food. So, you, know, it was like, you know, it was just, and my mom was so like, humiliated. And, uh, and, um, and so then I like start school and I have to go to school that first day. And all the other girls go to their, like during PE, they go and they're doing their cheerleading stuff. And I, it's like me and two other girls in these like blue onesie jumpsuits for PE class. And I'm just like, this can't be my life. Um, and so I became an office monitor um, just to get out of that human wearing that jumpsuit. And you killed all the cheerleaders. And I killed all the cheerleaders. Yeah. But it did set me, you know, because then you're like, well, screw the cheerleaders, they're all losers. I'm an office monitor, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can give you a hall pass or I can't. Uh, <laughs> got the power but it did set me you know then eighth grade I you know I never tried out for cheerleader again um and it, so then it was you know what do you do how do you you know in high school it's all about finding your identity and who are you and I found Carolyn and but she was the first person to say I was talented at anything I guess I do. <laughs> but the thing is, is like Carol Ann made us feel, because usually the kids that are in drama in high school are the kids that are, you know, geeky or outsiders. And Carol Ann had the ability to make us feel like we were cooler than the cheerleaders. We were doing something more important. We were, you know, our bodies were instruments. You know, we, we she just gave us the tools we needed and, and made us feel like those tools were important. And we did competition throughout the state. I mean, it just gave everyone, you know, just felt a, a sense of purpose when they were that hour a day in her class. I've been flourished in America, and so that Carol Ann is able to teach, and there are budgets for, for drama teachers and arts teachers. So why do you do it? Well, the main reason that I do it is for people like Joey, because not everybody is going to be a national merit. Not everybody's going to be, you know, someone who's going to get a scholarship to go to college uh, because they're a football player. But people are talented. You know, they can paint a picture. They can learn how to do, you know, shuffle ball change. You know, they can do a scene. Uh, they can play an instrument. And for a lot of students, that's why they go to school. 